Oh, do you want to talk about like education specifically? Yeah. What are you thinking? I have feelings. I have okay. questions. Like about the education system? How just, it... just about uh, what we're trying to do. Yeah. It's something I've been thinking about lately. And as I watch other people doing their videos. Yeah. Lay it on me. Um, so we make videos for this thing called YouTube EDU. That's like this little world that we've created for ourselves. The education end of the YouTube sphere. Um, it's no makeup tutorials, but it's good. Uh, so what are we... Like, I, I ask myself this question a lot, like, what are we trying to do? What, like, are, we, are we teachers? Are we entertainers? Are we uh, what I call curiosity, curiosity inspirers? Like, a lot of people think, I hear this a lot, that, like, that, that we're educating on YouTube. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, when I talk to teachers, I think there's still a gap between what we're doing and what really takes place in classrooms. Um, I think we're helping make people change people's perceptions of science, which is hugely important. I think that's maybe the biggest step of all of this and, and changing how they interact with science and how, they're, how they're, their identity and their confidence uh, comes into play when it comes to, to learning. But I really wonder if we are teaching people in a way that is equal or, or as valuable as the way that we're teaching them in schools. And maybe not, you know, it's, different, it's a different kind of value for, to, to be sure, but um, there are a lot of big YouTubers who think that, that like, these kinds of videos are just gonna be like the next classroom. Yeah, even something as amazing as Crash Course, the most uh, detailed and wonderful YouTube videos are still a one-way street. It's, it's us to them. We can build communities, we can answer questions, but a classroom is a very different place. Uh, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how we turn our one-way system into a more interactive learning experience. Um, you know, Paul Anderson, who runs Bozeman Science, like would, you know, he, he would agree with me big time here, but, uh, you know, I used to think that we were just teaching. I'm just a teacher who talks at the camera. But I don't know if, we, uh, if, we're, if we're ever gonna take the place, or even, and I don't know if a lot of us know how we even supplement the classroom. These are really, really open questions right now that we need to think a lot about if we're gonna say that we're educators. Um, just because a teacher shows a video in class, how do we know how useful or how it's being used? Is this part of a lesson? We got things like curriculum and standards and things that we gotta think about. Or do we wanna think about them or we just wanna make what we're making? Um, how does it come into play? Uh, so we're definitely entertaining and we're definitely inspiring and that's hugely important. But are we teaching? Question mark. Yeah. Well, that's something that a lot of people talk about and wonder about. So like, for example, Nick Jenkins, uh, the guy who does direction for Sex Explanations and SciShow and Crash Course. Mm -hmm. So he used to be a professor at University of Montana, just like Lindsay uh, was. Um, and it's funny because Lindsay always talks to me like the dirt. By the way, Lindsay and I are like actual like friends in real life. So cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was talking to me how about like Nick always harps on her whenever she uses the word teaching because he's like, you shouldn't say teaching, you should say educating because they're two different things. And like for me, you know, guy who speaks four languages, I love the nitty gritty of like semantics and like what words actually mean when you get down to it. And like, I think you, you put, you present an excellent question in that like, are you guys really teaching or are you educating or is it something else? And like, to me, I kind of think about it in terms of what you guys do and especially like Crash Course, which shows up in the classrooms. Um, it's not so much that you're educating, so much as you are facilitating learning, which is kind of like a backwards way of looking at it. But like, if you can get somebody curious about a subject, they're gonna be educating themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a hugely important part of this. It's, any teacher will tell you this too, that what's done in the classroom is never enough. That's never gonna get the job done. Like you're never gonna create the, the student of your dreams that way. Uh, we have to inspire people who are going to continue to learn, who are going to, you know, become whatever bug that I caught that, that, that caused me to make the decision to go to college for like 10 years and get a PhD. Like, 
maybe not that extreme, but you know, to create that person who's, who wants to continue learning for their whole life on their own because they find it fun and interesting and valuable, that's every teacher's dream. Um, it, you know, that's, that's a very specific part of the learning process and the teaching process. We're, we can facilitate part of that, but uh, we, yeah, we need to think long and hard about how we fit into the, the, the classroom that has the blackboard in it instead of just the classroom that has the little black box that you press play in it. Um, those are going to be an interesting future to see how they work together. Oh, for sure. For sure. That's, that's one of the things, like, because originally I wanted to go into data science and just take unwieldy amounts of information, because that's what I was doing for the Navy, is I was an information, or intelligence analyst, and, like, doing something, taking that information, making it into something that other people can use. But I can't help but just be super fascinated at the education aspect as well. Because, like, I like teaching. I think it's really fun. I was doing it for the Navy. I was doing it before I joined the Navy. Um, and so, like, watching people, like you said right at the beginning, like, how teachers get high off of that, like, moment of seeing somebody, like, like yesterday when I showed little Maxwell your yeah. video on clouds, like, to watch him just, like, get engrossed when, like, he's never had anything like that in his life as far as science goes. To think that maybe this inspired, like, this poor kid to like suddenly go and start asking questions that he hasn't asked before. Yeah, I mean, so so many students are afraid to speak up and raise their hand, or or, or they feel like they're the only ones with a question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and we get to one great thing that we get to do is is, is take away all that because we get to have a a one on one experience of some kind with that person, however old that student is, whether they're six or or, or eighty six. That knocks down a lot of those those anxieties and 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 sort of uh, you know the problems that come in a traditional classroom um, but you know having been in the front of many traditional classrooms in, in, in a college environment it's a completely different thing to be teaching in in like a real teaching sense where you gotta I mean I can't I can't test how well you get the video on YouTube I'm not gonna give you a quiz at the end but we need to we need to know if what we're doing is working. This is a huge thing that's going on in science communication in general. It's like now we're getting pretty good at this stuff. Uh, we got the Neil Tysons of the world out there making things like Cosmos. You know, there's the good thing on t on TV science. That's the one. Um, but how much do we know about like how how good Cosmos was for science? We can even point to the ratings. We've already talked about. How you don't want to point at the views though. The views don't tell you much. How do we know how this is changing people's perceptions? We can't, uh, when it comes to science communication, the, the biggest pitfall that we fall into, the biggest habit, bad habit that we fall into is assuming that people have a deficit of knowledge. There's a, if you're into the, the theory of these kind of things, you can look up the, the, the information deficit theory or the knowledge deficit theory. This is false, like you don't, change people's perceptions or minds or, or opinions by beating them with an information stick. Like you just don't keep giving them more information. Uh, even the best scientists, the most logical people on earth are subject to our personal biases and our values. And, and we are trained, like that's, that's the most important part of the scientific education is training yourself to, to operate, to, to pull, to, to uh, to pull away from those tendencies and those habits, but we keep we continue to do with science communication that if only they knew more, then then they would think differently. And we we're, we know that that doesn't work. There's a body of research growing to tell us that that doesn't work. What we're able to do with things like YouTube is build a more important part of that equation, which is the trust. We're building communities of shared values and shared trust, and then it becomes easy, then their doors are open for our information and then they become flexible and they begin to ask questions about how they look at the world because they're not coming, we're not threatening their, their, the way that they look at the world. We're, I, we're, 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 we're trying to view the world with them and we're, we're helping them, we're, we're making more of a team instead of, uh, uh, instead of a, a top-down threat. And that's how we're going to change how people look at the world and, and, and change their behaviors in it and change the way that they vote and the way that they work and the way that they buy and the way that they live and all of these things that these trickle down effects of science that we want to take place for the future next year. Like, 
we are the trust is so important you know who is delivering you the message turns out to be just as important as what that message is in many in many regards and we have an ability to create families of, of shared curiosity here on YouTube and um, and elsewhere on the internet but this is just the, if it ain't the, the, the best darn place to do it I don't know where it is Yeah, one thing that, that that we're at risk of, oh, I didn't get to talk about this on the when the camera's running, but a concern about trivia. You want to rock and roll on this? Yeah. Yeah. One thing I think a lot about is uh, is tri trivia versus meaning. Um, you know, we've all seen like a top ten video, and there can be really good information in there. But are we being, I'm, I just, I'm super concerned with being trivial. Um, and again, like not having to chase views and add, add views to, to buy my dinner is great because I get to think a little bit beyond this. But um, I don't want to create an environment where a, a successful YouTube video, the right way to do things because it's been done that many times and it's gotten this many views becomes trivia. Um, I don't want to lose out on stories. I don't want to underestimate people's attention spans or interest. You know that that you know we know that. So so what if we know that like a certain percentage of people won't watch a video past three minutes? Well, if the story takes you six to really do that information justice, like, I want to do justice to the information. Um, I want to challenge people to come with me and and get out of that comfort zone and say, you know what, I. Sometimes this is worth more than three minutes. And, 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 and pull them. And I want to make something that pulls them beyond that. And it's not going to work the, every time. And not everybody's going to do that. But uh, I'm deeply concerned online with, with this tendency toward, towards the trivial. Like, we don't need another pretty picture of space. Like, how, how, uh, is, that, is that good science communication? Oh, it's something we look at. But what do we do when some, what, while they're looking? That's the question. We just want them to look. Like, we want them to walk by and look at science's butt? Some comic said this. Uh, like, that's not what we want. We want them to stop and talk to science and get to know it. So, we, there, I don't want people to be reactionary and chase traffic and feel like they have to, to do what is trivia and trivial. Because then people will treat science trivially. That's a, a huge risk we've got to stay away from. Not the top 10 videos are bad. 37 things about this thing those are fine those are always going to be a part of what we do but um, I don't want that there ever be an answer about what's right about what does a good video mean and if we ever do have answers like that I don't want them to point in that general direction keep challenging people and don't underestimate them that you you never you never win by, by underestimating your audience or underestimate the audience that you don't have yet it's tricky because like you so talking about like the whole three minute limit thing uh it's almost a matter of like unintentional social engineering because you know youtube does this thing where they have access to all of the information ever like all of the statistics all of the data and they look at it and they're like well based on this this is the truth that we found but it's tricky because like if if you give that to everybody or when you give that to everybody and you say this is what you find to be best practices suddenly that's what becomes standard and when you don't have a like a variety of time limits where everybody's looking for three minutes that makes it more difficult and it it's like self-perpetuating yeah um and that's risky because that's that's what happened with um like why the algorithms are all effed up is they started basing it like they made it so that it would promote stuff that was popular but then the flip side to that is the stuff that you find is the stuff that is popular exactly we get in a we get in a, a filter bubble and a circular uh, an, an Ouroboros of like self of like self promotion um, discovery and that, that feeds into the discovery problem we're all you know we want there's got to be a better way to get new people um, it, out there and 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 deliver this amazing information that, that these new voices have uh, what is it I mean YouTube has constructed a very creatively open sandbox, but it's still a sandbox with edges and very clear rules. Um, you know, 
I know the algorithm says that how a video does in like the first 24 hours means a lot to how it gets featured on like the front page, but is that what we want like the real bottom line of meaning of our videos to be? Uh, I, I, I think we've just gotten people so focused on this conversation that they've gotten out of uh, the, the habit of the story. Like, people thought magazines were dead and newspapers and these, and they, still, they thought text-based communication was dying. But what do we see? We see a, a rebirth, uh, at least in science, of long-form form journalism. Beautiful stuff. And it turns out people are willing to pay for it. And, and it, it, like, you look back and you're like, well, duh, it, it turns out it's good. And science books are selling well, and, and, and it turns out people just want good stuff. So you know, maybe, we're, maybe we're turning the corner into stop, maybe we can stop having this conversation about algorithms and watch times and, and, and making sure that the first thing we're asking is, am I telling a good story? Because if you do that, I mean, it, it's the first lesson in any science writing course, in any journalism course. And it, but we continue to have to like re-educate people all the time with this. Just tell a good story. That's that's what you do. Challenge your audience. We don't we don't progress uh, unless we unless we break out of the comfort zone.